Hi, my name is Christian Tarsitano. Hi, I'm Lucas Lopez, and this is CCAA News. Today, we're going to be talking about Guy Paul Moran, a man who was wrongfully accused of murdering his neighbor. In 1984, a nine-year-old girl named Christine Jessup went missing. She was dropped off at home by the school bus. When her parents got home, they saw her bag on the counter, but no sign of Christine. Her parents called the police right away, and uh, everyone searched everywhere, and no clues. On December 31st, 1984, Christine's body was found. She had been stabbed to death around 50 kilometers from her home. A man named Guy Paul Morin, who worked for a furniture manufacturing company, was her neighbor. He was considered, well, weird and awkward. Guy would later testify that he had taken in the groceries, taken a nap, and worked on his family renovations on the day of Christine's disappearance. The police started to investigate and survey Guy's home on February 14, 1985. On February 22nd, Guy was interrogated by police and gave nothing to prove, to prove any type of guilt. Police officers also found uh, Guy's time card from work. The card was shown that it would have almost been impossible for Guy to leave work and get home and commit the crime before his parents got home. On April 22nd, 1985, Guy was arrested. In his interrogation, Guy would state more than once that he was innocent. On February 7th, 1986, Guy had his first trial and was released not guilty. The Crown appealed and there was a second trial for Guy on May 28, 1990. In this trial, more people testified against Guy. Most of the people who testified in front of Morin focused on the behavior that he was acting weirdly and unusual. Guy was found guilty of first degree murder on July 30th, 1992. After spending 18 months in prison, new DNA evidence came out and Guy was released. One of the main problems in this case is tunnel vision. The police focused in on Guy. He was their main suspect and most people believed he was the for sure killer of Christine Jessup. This led police to not deeply investigate any other suspects and for Jessup's killer never to be found. Another problem in this case is demeanor evidence. Another way they used to convict Guy was by his strange behavior in interrogation, causing police to get suspicious. Guy didn't look for Jessup's body and didn't attend her funeral. Just because this is not how we expected him to act does not mean he's guilty. In the case of Guy Paul Moran, the victim's family and the police got too close. The police spent a lot of time with Jessup's family. This caused the police to be influenced by what the victim's family thought. The investigators got very close with the victim's family, which caused the police to need an arrest in order to put the family at ease. When Guy was interviewed by police, a lot of the interviewing was untaped and unrecorded. This made it easy for police to make what Guy said sound more incriminating. Withholding evidence was another problem with this case. There were certain pieces of evidence in this case that were not shown cor or correctly distributed to the jury. These pieces of evidence should have been demonstrated right away, especially because they shined a light on Morin's innocence. 